I'm Anna Wade, Director of Museum Education, and standing with me today is Eric Stroll, Chief Curator at the Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum. We're here in the Baseball Hall of Fame archives to look at some great artifacts that tell the story of opening day. Eric, can you tell us what you've pulled for us today? Yes, absolutely, Anna. We have oh, dozens and dozens, if not into the hundreds, of artifacts from opening day, uh, some of which are on display in the museums and the team lockers and elsewhere. But we certainly have a bunch of things in storage, so we pulled some out to talk about few different angles of opening day and the types of things that we have collected over time uh, to commemorate opening day uh, for the majors. So we can go through some of these if you like. Great, that'd be wonderful. We have um, two artifacts out here that are commemorating the first day for franchises. So we pulled two things here from 1998 uh, to commemorate the first day of the Arizona Diamondbacks and the Tampa Bay Devil Rays, then it was the Devil Rays. Here we have uh, spikes worn by Travis Lee, who played first base for the Diamondbacks, the first game in their history in 1998. This would have been March 31st. Uh, they played the Colorado Rockies that day. Travis Lee got the first hit for the franchise with these spikes. He then also went on to hit a home run later in the game, thereby scoring the first run, home run, and RBI. All of those franchise firsts in these shoes. Uh, and then Travis went on to have a few more years with uh, with the Diamondbacks and then a career with a, a couple of other teams after that. Elsewhere, the same day on March 31st, in Tampa, the Tampa Bay Devil Rays uh, were playing the Detroit Tigers. And this is a bat from Hall of Famer Wade Boggs that we have in the collection. Wade hit the first home run in franchise history opening day, 1998. Uh, and the next year, he happened to hit this, probably his most famous home run as a Devil Ray when he got 3,000 hits, becoming the first player to hit uh, a home run for his 3,000th hit. So we have this uh, artifact from Wade in the collection. Unfortunately for both those teams, they lost those games that day, and uh, which is often the case for new uh, franchises, did not perform at all that well uh, during their inaugural years. But we feel it's very important here at the Hall of Fame to commemorate these types of moments that happen in baseball history and, and teams that come into the league uh, is certainly a, a change in the history of baseball that we like to document. Great, we have some other artifacts here that you've pulled. Uh, can you tell us a little about this, this ring? Now this is a ring that was given out opening day 1981 uh, by the Philadelphia Phillies to their fans to commemorate the 1980 World Series championship. Now this is kind of fun because uh, we didn't receive this until 2009, and so the donor actually went to this game as a kid in 1981, and then 2009, as an adult, almost 30 years later, decided to donate this ring to the collection. So not only was this something that made an impact on him at the time, obviously because he saved it, but he still th thought it was important enough to give to us almost 30 years later. And we don't have too many types of fan giveaways in the collection, and so to have something like this that commemorates, um, you know, the, one of the greatest moments in Philly's history, and certainly if you're a Philly's fan, it would have had an impact on you. To have that here in the collection also shows you that we appreciate the fan's point of view. You know, you see a lot of bats, balls, shoes, jerseys, and things you expect to see here in the collection, but little fan souvenirs may not be something you'd expect to see. So uh, we cover everything uh, here in the collection. A different type of commemorative event or artifact that we have here in the collection was for opening day in 2003, a much uh, sadder occasion, unfortunately. This is Craig Biggio's jersey from opening day in 2003. Uh, the most important thing and the reason that we got it primarily was for the special patch that's on the right sleeve here to commemorate the space shuttle disaster, which happened uh, a couple months before in February. Uh, obviously, um, that was a, a tragic event for America, and it's something that the Astros um, wanted to commemorate throughout the season. Now, Eric, we also have a couple baseballs on this cart. Can you tell us about them? Yeah, they're um, pretty much uh, the two most significant things that probably have ever happened on opening day. And so we have uh, what seems to be just uh, you know average baseballs and certainly not the most exciting stuff to look at when you look at artifacts from the collection. But uh, the meaning behind these artifacts and the events that they signify, certainly important in baseball history. We have here baseball from Bob Feller's opening day no-hitter in 1940 the only opening day no-hitter in the history of baseball. This would have been um, obviously 1940, just prior to uh, our entry into World War II after Pearl Harbor in 1941. 
and of course uh, Bob uh, served uh, with distinction uh, in World War II in the Pacific Theater. This was a, a one nothing shutout victory um, that he got, obviously being a no-hitter, but a one nothing victory, so he didn't have too much of a margin for error in that game. Final artifact is probably the most important thing out here on the table, and it is an American League ball from 1910. The thing that makes it so important is that's the first presidential opening day pitch in the history of the game. This was thrown by William Howard Taft, April 14, 1910, uh, to uh, Washington Senator's pitcher, Walter Johnson, who caught the presidential first pitch. This would have been Walter's first opening uh, day start. He would go on to have uh, 13 more, uh, a total of 14 opening day starts, only surpassed by Tom Seavers, 16. The fun thing about it is the inscription on this ball. Now, this was April 14th. On April 15th, Walter Johnson had a friend take the ball to the White House so Taft could sign it. And it says here, for Walter Johnson, with the hope that he may continue to be as formidable as in yesterday's game. William H. Taft, April 15th, 1910. Uh, this is a, a, a tradition, obviously, that, is, that has gone on pretty much ever since that time. Uh, every president since Taft has thrown out a ceremonial opening day pitch at least sometime during their tenure, uh, except for Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter threw out a ceremonial first pitch at the 1979 World Series uh, to kind of compensate for not having done opening day. This really was the inception of that real connection for the fans. Interestingly enough, too, was uh, they have some home video of that um, that people had shot. It was the first time that motion picture cameras had really been brought to a ballpark. So. Really neat stuff. This is something we don't display that often. We like to keep it in good condition and not, not uh, expose it to light and things like that. Uh, but certainly probably the most important, not what happened in the game, but what it signifies in terms of the, the symbolism for America and baseball. This is probably the best thing we have for that. Great. Eric, thank you for taking your time to share these incredible artifacts with us. And thank you for joining us. From all of us here at the Baseball Hall of Fame, we wish you a great baseball season and a happy opening day. For more information on this and other artifacts in our collection, please visit baseballhall.org.